Hello and welcome to Navani Milorian Fury video. I'm Shergok, your host, and today we are going to take a closer look at what exactly went wrong in Renner's childhood and why she was desperately lonely before she found Climb. But before we're going to take a closer look at any of this, let me quickly thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as a thanks to all users of the YouTube thanks function for making one-time donations. And with that said, let's get to the topic at hand. And I have to start off by speaking a bit more in line with YouTube standards, because the woman who, in the end, went through what we'll continue to call a very goal-oriented personal development, also didn't have an easy childhood. Simply put, Renna grew up like a storybook princess, at least from the outside. She lived in a world full of magic and wonder, in a beautiful castle. Hunger and illness were never an issue for her, thanks to healing magic and the wealth of her parents. Not only did she have her youth, but she also had her beauty. In other words, she had a childhood that you'd usually see only in Disney animated films. However, she had one decisive problem. All material wealth was meaningless to her without a connection to another person. Rena was a genius from an early age, almost like what Dr. Vagapunkt from One Piece is to his own world. Just without a devil fruit, but well, technically speaking, later she became a devil, an imp to be precise, so potatoes, potatoes. But with her genius came an even more devilish curse. Social isolation. Rana couldn't build any connection to people around her. A human child raised by wolves at least has a social structure that they can integrate into, and social connections that give some sort of comfort and a feeling of belonging. But due to her extraordinary intelligence, Rana was denied this connection. And it was as if she had been raised as a human child among a tribe of orcs, goblins, ogres or the likes of them. And she quickly became aware of her otherness, and others didn't understand her, at least not what she meant, because her intellect made her experience of the world entirely different. As a result, Rena also distanced herself from her wealth and social status, and due to the stress of being socially isolated, developed a food-related disorder, again to phrase it in a very, very YouTube-friendly way. And such things typically don't have a good prognosis, if you know what I mean. And this worry about his third daughter naturally weighed heavily on her father, King Ramposa III, who perhaps during this time also didn't even notice that his two sons, Zanek and Barbro, were developing a very unhealthy relationship with each other and would be future rivals that would split the court in two. But again, all of this changed once Rena found a person she actually could connect with, just not as equals, in one of the back alleys of the capital city of Riestais. A street orphan was shivering and freezing. He had just had the misfortune of running into some really bad guys, who had hurt him terribly. And now, shivering and freezing in the cold, wet capital streets, he was nearing his end. And in this semi-conscious state, Climb saw out of the corner of his eyes the silhouette of Rena, and he mistook the young princess for an angel. And that look of complete bliss with which Klein gazed at Renna, triggered something in her. For the first time, she was able to form a real connection to another person. However, this connection wasn't a healthy one, because Renna didn't see this dumb street boy as an equal being, but as a loyal dog, a puppy, someone who would be unconditionally loyal to her and love her, even though he was intellectually inferior. So this was basically the moment where a young child goes to some animal shelter and adopts a puppy. And again, this is a very unhealthy thing to do to another human being. And so once again, something very unhealthy had happened and had been set in motion here. A fixation that had begun to take root. 
But again, no one at court noticed this. First of all, Rana was just the third born princess, so there wasn't that much focus on her as far as royalty goes. And the fact that Rana now ate properly and had found someone to connect with and soon after fit into her social role as a princess was seen by the people at court as a healing, if her, again, if her condition was even widely known. And it must also be said that in this fantasy world, mental issues of this nature, again to phrase it in a very YouTube-friendly way, weren't really taken seriously. The magical way to address these problems would also be to go to a priest or preacher and have new hope instilled in you. And as strange as this sounds, this actually works in the new world of Overlord. Nea Baraya managed as an evangelist to restore hope and a will to live in many residents of the Holy Kingdom, who had gone through hell on earth, thanks to Demiurge aka Yaldebaud and his demons. And she helped her to her preachings to cope with this trauma. In other words, the inhabitants of this world lacked any deeper psychological understanding of what truly went wrong with Renna, and the usual remedies, like going to a sermon, weren't going to work. And only Marquis Raven noticed that something was deeply wrong with Renna, recognizing that from her childhood on, she was very intelligent, but had a lot of social difficulties. And as a result of her fixation on climb, her de facto human pet, her dog she wanted to keep on a leash so he couldn't run away, and only Marquis Raven really noticed that something was deeply wrong with Renna, recognizing during her childhood that she was very intelligent, but had social difficulties. And as a result, her fixation on climb, her de facto human pet, her dog that she wanted to keep on a leash, so he couldn't run away, was seen at worst as a fetish. Even when his brother Zanek only brought this up in a small circle after Ren had talked a bit too much about all of the things she wanted to do with climb, again, to her half-brother, of all people. And the rest of the court increasingly looked at the Golden Princess with approval, and some of the older members with growing interest in her as well. And Renna earned her reputation as the Golden Princess, after all, someone who was smart and kind and caring, but seemingly also very naive, who apparently only wanted the best for everyone. And naturally the royal family also had a vested interest in maintaining its reputation by downplaying Renna's early childhood problems. As mentioned, no one understood the core issue here, that Renna, fundamentally, only had a human connection to climb, as in the connection between a human and a pet. And this had fatal consequences, because if Renna, this genius, was only interested in climb, then the kingdom, her family, the land, and its people were nothing more than bargaining chips to her at the best. And Demiurge and Albedo exploited this connection to bring Renna over to her own side. Since Renna had eyes only for climb, it didn't bother her to betray her family, her country, and the people who loved and admired her, just selling them out. Renna condemned the remaining nine million inhabitants of her country to utter ruin, exchanging all of their lives for her own happiness, her own immortality, and the eternal life of her lapdog, which is a very disturbing and fitting description of climb in this case, but Renna felt no shame or remorse, nor did she feel disgust or repulsion. On the contrary, from deep within, she felt nothing but pure gratitude and joy to these people that she had been sacrificing. Once again, she understood exactly what she was doing and didn't try to suppress it. She was fully aware of how terrible her actions would seem in her former, former social context, but Renna felt nothing but honest and sincere gratitude for the sacrifice that millions of people had to make for her own happiness. And again, that's precisely why Labedo considered Renna a heteromorphic spirit, even when her body was still a human. And ironically, it was only in this demonic layer, in the Great Tomb of Nazareth, that Renna found a social connection, 
namely with Demiurge and Albedo, who were intellectually her equals, with whom she could have discussions on equal footing. In a sense, she had finally found a family, a social circle, people she can consider her equals, who understood her perspective, comprehended it, and could think along with her in the great tomb. And in Alberto specifically, Rene had also found someone with whom she could share her obsession with Climb. For Alberto, had certain ambitions to Ein Sulgon. And Ein Sulgon is basically to her what Climb is to Rena, her great love. So even in this regard, Rena was now able to exchange ideas with someone like-minded, discussing every little detail of her obsession and perhaps even drawing further inspiration from it. In other words, Ren has now found a family, the love of her life, with whom she will live for all eternity, happily even after, and even a better and more secure place than her palace in the heart of the great tomb of Nazareth. In other words, Rana has gotten her Disney happy ending, and not just because of her song in the anime, but because everything she ever dreamed of has come true, and even more. Only from our perspective do we of course understand that this was a tremendous tragedy that had occurred behind this happiness, and how far removed her behavior is from that of an actual Disney princess. And with that said, now it's your turn. What do you think about Rena's childhood, her loneliness, and her basically coping strategy with turning Climb into a loyal dog? Let me know it down in the comment section. And with that said, please check out my German channel, my fantasy channel, and if you don't want to listen to my voice or accent, but are still interested in the things I have to say, I have made an AI channel where I use AI voiceovers for my videos. And the channels are all linked down in the video description. Also, please check out my Patreon if you want to support me beyond just leaving a like or sub. And with that said, I finally say thank you very much for watching. Thanks to all of my Patreons for supporting this channel. And special thanks to... Dash 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 Arda Daddy Arda ASK Bad Guy Bad Burrito 316 Bezer Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley Zero Tutu Ron, Sia, Crystal Prime, Dead Slime, Death is Mercy, Deathless Dragonlord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devin Downen, Ding Dong, Dan Pep, Dragonlord Placido Saxophone, Duckwagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Feralchivan, Guy with that head, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch V. Bitania with a mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishiki and Rai, Lord Touch Me, Lofraiser, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Ruru, Primus Eleven, Rhinomir, Kune Karakos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Sir Axolotl, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, Diorg Warboss, Rock Ed Smasher, T.E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Zinukai, and Sonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.